In this video module, we'll be looking at some basic data manipulation with data frames in R. Uh, the module is going to consist of three videos, relatively short, and each one will deal with a different sample data set. And so I provided this R script called sampledataframes.r uh, that I'm going to use in the, uh, in the presentation, and it's also available with the module. A quick note that the script is meant to be used interactively, so I have it here open in R Studio, and my process for the video is I'm going to be going through and just executing basically line by line, uh, and then we'll discuss what's happening uh, while we process the um, while we process the file. So let's see back to our presentation. The objectives for the module is for you to understand the basics of data manipulation. So we're going to use standard R data frames and we're going to focus on uh, several different aspects. In particular we're going to look at how to view or summarize the, the, the data frame, individual element selection, column selection. We're going to look at column selection from a how do I generate values to how do I extract into a new data frame. Then we'll look at some row selection techniques and finally we'll look at uh, what's called logical indexing or what's sometimes referred to as masking as a filtering uh, technique. So let's go back to our initial or back to our script and the very first um, data set that we're going to use is the MT cars data set, which is part of the standard R distribution. And so if you just execute the help uh, MT cars, you can see what this data actually uh, is. It's a set of data extracted from the 1974 Motor Trend magazine. And so um, we're going to use that data set. And uh, the first step is to actually look at the uh, data, or look at the data frame. And so what I've done is I've pulled a set of summary functions from the R statistics tutorial uh, that just gives you, provides you different information about the, uh, about the object. And so if I just control enter here on this first line, you can see that this is in fact a, uh, a data frame. I'm not going to go through all of these individually. It's a couple of them that I find particularly useful. The STR, the structure, gives the, the structure of the data frame. So you can see that we have MPG, uh, cylinders, uh, displacement, horsepower, and so on. And these are all uh, numerical um, these are all numerical values uh, for the columns. You can also use summary and uh, um, head is something we're going to use quite a bit. So if you execute that, it shows you the first uh, few lines. I think it's the first five or six lines of the data frame by default. And so you can see we have the row the row names are the actual vehicle names and the column names as I uh, as I mentioned before are the, the characteristics of the um, uh, of the individual vehicle. Uh, if you use the fix command it does two things. One it opens the in a, a, a very familiar data um, spreadsheet kind of view. It also uh, adds the data frame to the global environment. So if you look over on the left, let me make this just a little bit bigger here, yeah. And then you, you click on it, then you can open the data frame in view mode. If you note down here in the console, by clicking on it up in the environment, it's equivalent to issuing the, uh, the view command, or the view function actually, that opens it up and lets you uh, look at the data. So I'm going to close that real quick. And so you should be familiar with the basic uh, functions that you can use to interrogate the, the data frame. In row and in call, if you need the numerical number of columns or rows are, are, pretty, uh, are pretty useful. Okay, so moving on, the very first thing is pretty simple, individual element selection. And I have two ways that I can do this. Um, one is by using the row, row number, column number. So in this case, I have row 5, column 3. If you go back here, so this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5. So a Hornet Sportabout. Column 3, 1, to three, which is the displacement, uh, 360. And so we get that. If I execute that uh, statement, which I did already, you get 360. I can also access that same element by using the individual row name and column name. And so you can see I get the exact same thing uh, there. And so this is very much like accessing a, an element of any two-dimensional uh, two array. Okay, so moving on, column selection is next, and so this is something called slicing, and I'm going to come back to the single bracket notation, or the, the, the name here, single bracket, in just a second, uh, but you're going to see what this does is it generates a new data frame. So if I execute this MT cars one basically what gets created is an anonymous data frame that's got the 
rows from the original and the single column and I selected uh, column one. I can also do the same thing by using the column name. So I did MT cars HP and it created a, a, again a new data frame, an anonymous data frame um, with just that column. I can select multiple columns, so I can just send a vector of column numbers. I could also send a vector of column names, as we'll see in just a second. Uh, and this lets you select the individual columns that you want to show up, and it also put, uses, uh, uses the sequence that you provide it. If I want to save the data frame that I'm doing right here, I did sub 1, and in sub 1 I said I want to have the, the miles per gallon, the weight, uh, and the carburetor type uh, in the... Um, uh, in the new data frame and so over here in the environment if we look at that uh, that's in fact what we have uh, is the um, a new data frame with uh, just those three columns if i wanted to do some additional manipulation uh, i would want to store it to an intermediate name or uh, a different data frame as opposed to just using the anonymous ones Okay, so the second method is to extract a column to a vector, and so there are two ways to do this. One is by using this dollar sign notation, so I give it the data frame name and a dollar sign and then the column name. Note also that the column names here are not, um, they're not quoted. So when I, uh, up above, I quote the, the column names when I'm using this dollar sign selection method, I don't. So when I select that and then I look over here at the um, at the environment, you can see I have just a vector of values. So I have extracted, rather than create a new data frame with that column, I've just extracted the individual values. Now that I have those values in the data frame, of course I can get the mean, standard deviation, and any other function that I want uh, on a vector. The second notation is this double bracket notation, which uh, should make more sense now when I, that I talked about single bracket up here. So we have two different mechanisms of column selection. Single bracket results in a data frame. Double bracket results in a vector. So if I execute that, then I have weights. So they have all of the, uh, the column of weight values. And then as, I, as before, I, now that I have this vector of numbers, I can do any kind of manipulation that I'd like to do with, um, with the vectors. For row selection, uh, the most basic way uh, is I just select a row and then uh, have this trailing comma. And so if I execute that, you can see what gets created is a new data frame with just the row that I selected. I have a note for you here on um, uh, the trailing comma. This is something uh, that at least I forget all the time. And if I try to execute this without the trailing comma, oops, without the trailing comma, then I'm gonna, well, without the trailing comma, I'm going to get something totally different. I'm going to get this kind of cryptic uh, message saying you haven't defined columns uh, and so on. And so you've got to remember to do uh, the, the trailing comma. And as we'll see, that trailing comma basically says, give me all the columns. So it's in effect the wildcard character. So as before, this uh, I just created an anonymous data frame. Uh, if I want to save the data frame, in this case, I'm getting that same row, Hornet Sport About, and now I'm specifying some specific columns that I want. So if I execute uh, this line, now I have a new data frame over here, our, our row one, and now I have my single row and the three columns that I've requested. Uh, if I execute rows two, then uh, I have not specified a column, so I'm essentially going to get rows 1, 3, 5, and 7, and then all of the columns. So I go over to rows 2, uh, the data frame in there is 1, 3, 5, 7, uh, and again, the, all of the columns in the... Um, in uh, the data frame. And so again, note that what I've done is in this case, I've specified a single row. In this case, I've specified a vector of rows. And of course I could do a vector of row names and so on. And so there's a variety of different ways that I can filter. But the key here is that the, the syntax is basically the set of rows that you want, then a comma. And if you want everything, just leave it blank. And if you want specific columns, then you somehow uh, mark those columns. So next we'll do a brief example, or a brief introduction anyway, to what's called logical indexing, 
or sometimes referred to as masking. And so the example that I'm doing here is rather than pulling all of the data out or pulling individual rows by name, I'm going to pull individual rows by condition. And the condition I want is I want to find all the heavy cars. And so my definition of heavy is that the weight is greater than four. I don't know what the units are. I guess I could probably look in the help. Oh, here it is right here. Weight in thousand pounds. So I want heavy cars, everything greater than uh, 4,000 pounds. And so to do that, I create this logical filter or a mask and I'm just applying this condition saying MT cars dollar sign weight so this again extracts the column of values and then I'm just doing a logical comparison of greater than four and when I execute that if I look over here to my heavy the vector named heavy it's just a logical vector of true and false values where the false values are the ones that do not meet this condition and the true ones do now, if I want the heavy cars, I can just use this condition to apply my row filter. And so, in other words, I'm slicing the heavy cars. So if I execute that, now I have a new data frame called heavy cars. And if I look at that, this is the slice of our data set, our data frame, where the cars, the weight is greater than um, four, 4,000 pounds. Similarly, uh, I can apply the condition um, uh, in place, so without creating the intermediate uh, mask. So I just, in this case, to pull out the light cars, I just use the condition uh, car uh, weight less than two, and then I applied it directly. So in this case, I created the mask and then used the mask. In this case, I'll just directly apply the mask uh, to, to the filtering operation. And you see when I go to light cars, I have the same kind of structure, except this time I have uh, where is it? Here's wait. All of the light cars uh, from our, our data set. So continuing, suppose I want six cylinder cars that get better than 20 miles per gallon. So in this case, I have two conditions. The first condition is that the MPG is greater than 20. The second condition is that the cylinders, the number of cylinders uh, is equal to six. And so I can use the AND uh, operator here to make the AND condition. And again, remember the trailing comma that we have here. So when I execute that, I now have my 620 data frame. And these is all of the six cylinder cars that get greater than uh, 20 miles per gallon. Uh, suppose I want all of the uh, high power cars, or I want the cars that have greater than 250 horsepower. So I just have the condition now that HP greater than 250. Execute that, generate the uh, data frame called big boys. I look at this and say, Okay, there we go. We only have two of them, uh, two cars that have greater than um, 250 uh, horsepower. And so we look at this process. Uh, the process basically has three steps. One is deciding what you want. So in this case, I wanted heavy cars. I wanted light cars. I wanted the six cylinder greater than 20 miles per gallon. I wanted the, the power car. So for step one is decide what you want. Step two is taking what you want and then formulating that as a logical condition. So weight greater than four, weight less than two, MPG greater than 20, and cylinders equal six, and finally horsepower greater than 250. So step one, define what you want. Step two, formulate the logical conditions. Step three, then obviously filter the data frame using uh, that logical condition. And one of the problems you run into when you try to do this process is you don't adequately do step one. So if you immediately just start developing, you're trying to develop your mask or develop your logical condition without understanding exactly what you want, that tends to lead, lead to confusion. So again, make sure that you know exactly what you want before you go on to step two, which is defining the logical condition. So suppose now that I have this big boys uh, model, this big boys data frame, suppose that I wanted the actual value. Suppose that what I want to now is do some kind of processing with the um, with those values, with the horsepower values. What do I do to get that? Well, of course, we have this data frame. What we want to do is pull out the column, but the column we want to pull it, we want to pull it out as a vector of numbers. So I'm going to do this down here in the console. I would just do big boys 
And then I can do it one of two ways. I can either go to column four directly because I know that's what it is, right? If I didn't know that, I could go back and look at the look at the data. It's column one, column two, column three, column four. And so re recall that this double bracket notation says extract the column and give it to me as a vector. Or I could actually use the um, uh, the name. So HP horsepower is the name, and it leads to the exact same thing. So those were just a few examples of both column slicing and row slicing that filter our data. Uh, and we did it by knowing the columns and, and the rows that we want. And then we looked at how to use um, a uh, Boolean mask or uh, a logical indexing to uh, select rows based on a condition. In the next two videos, we're going to do um, some additional examples with different data sets. But before I do that, I also grab, so when you look at the help, what I did way back in the beginning of the video, uh, the help for MT cars, there's uh, this code snippet at the very bottom. Uh, and so I just execute that and it looks pretty interesting. So I thought I'd share it here. Uh, and so when I execute this code, this first plot, as I say, uh, it generates this plot. Uh, as I say in my comment here, I'm not sure I can interpret this, but it looks pretty cool. It basically looks like it does kind of a pairwise graphing of every combination. We can also easily do what's called a coplot. So now I have two different plots. And so I have the cylinder value, the, the, the engine size, four, six, or eight cylinder engine. And then against that, I plot the MPG versus displacement. The last thing that the sample code does is it converts some of the um, values, some of the numerical values in my data, my original data frame into factors. So you can see it did the, um, the, um, uh, the uh, carburetor, the gears, the cylinder, uh, the uh, transmission type, uh, and whatever VS stands for, it converted those from numbers, which was the original data, into factors. And if you look at the data frame, if you look at the summary value, so the original summary value, I'm sorry, this is the summary from MT Cars 2, you can see that effect right here is that we now created data frames because these make more sense as factors than they do as numbers. And if, again, if I compare that to the previous one, where the data frame treated these all as numbers. You can see that we have AM and gear and carb and VS and all just treated as numbers. And so it doesn't really make, uh, it doesn't really make as much sense as if we treat those uh, things as factors. So again, just a little uh, interlude into our how do you manipulate data because the code happened to be in the help and I thought it looked pretty interesting. In the next video, again, we'll look at a, a different data set and do some similar manipulation tasks.